Welcome back. Well, former Trump campaign manager briefly sent to jail ahead of his September trial. Our next guest calls the judge's move obnoxious to our Constitution. Here to explain, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus, lifelong Democrat, and the author of The Case Against Impeaching Trump, Alan Dershowitz. Professor, good morning. Good morning. What is your reaction to this development? Well, you know, there are thousands of people today in jail before they've been convicted of any crime, many of them minorities, many of them poor. Now Paul Manafort joins them based on an indictment. And indictments are not supposed to have any real impact. Uh, we still have a presumption of innocence. Under the law, Manafort is no more guilty of contacting witnesses or attempting to obstruct justice than any of us. The government says he did it. He says, no, he didn't do it. He didn't know there were witnesses, and his conversations were entirely innocent. Mm -hmm. Why does the government get to win without a hearing or without a trial? Why did they get to put him in jail where there's going to be an enormous pressure on him not only to sing, but perhaps even to compose, as one of the judges put mm -hmm. it. I think it's very, very unfair. He's not the only person in jail today for uh, uh, being indicted. There are tens of thousands of people. So, Professor There's something very wrong with a system that presumes guilt this way. Well, is this part of a, a public show, a demonstration that they're, that they're cracking down on Trump, that the noose is tightening? Is this, is this, is this part of composing? Well, it's part of pressure. If Paul Manafort were not uh, part of the campaign, uh, nobody would have ever looked into his mm -hmm. background, his lobbying. Nobody would be monitoring and finding out whether he's calling witnesses. Uh, you know, it's the most natural thing in the world when you're under investigation to see if maybe the witnesses should tell the truth. Um, I'm a lawyer. I know you're not supposed to do that. But most people don't understand that. And before he's put in jail, there should have been an evidentiary hearing, a mini trial at which he could present his defense. He could call witnesses. And only then do you put somebody in jail. But, you know, you can get the grand jury to indict a ham sandwich, as the chief judge mm -hmm. of New York once did. <laughs> Prosecutors just play with grand juries. They tell them what to do. There are 23 chairs lined up to be moved around by prosecutors. And the idea that we now put people in jail based on what a, a grand jury does, hearing only one side of the case, not the only side of the case, really is obnoxious to our Constitution. Yeah. I want your thoughts, because we've been talking about the IG report all morning, and we had Rudy Giuliani on yesterday, and he says that they are doubling down, and they don't really want to cooperate moving forward, because uh, they feel that it was tainted, that the early days we now know, Peter Strzok, who was leading the early Russian investigation during the campaign, now we know how he truly felt about the president and other high-up agents, how they felt. Do you think the president and his team uh, are making the right move by saying, how can we take this seriously? We now know uh, the real motives from the beginning. I think the more important thing is the IG report makes it clear that there was a justification for firing Comey. Comey is really the villain of the report. Uh, for his own personal benefit, mm -hmm. reputational benefit, he tried to have it both ways. He thought Hillary Clinton would win the election, therefore he would provide information against her, and then if she won the election, the Trump people couldn't complain. It was just completely designed to help his reputation. And he should have been fired. Hillary Clinton would have fired him. President Trump should have fired him on day one. And once the president has some justification for engaging in actions under Article mm -hmm. Two of the Constitution, you can't start questioning his motive. Did he also have another reason? Was he ha happy that he was fired so that the Russia thing could come to an end? Mm -hmm. Once we start probing the motivations of presidents, we're doing law by psychoanalysis rather than law mm -hmm. by actions. Interesting. Yeah, stuff. All right, Analysis. Professor, thank you. We've got to leave it there, but uh, a lot to think about. Always exactly good to see right. you, Professor. It was all based Thank on you. the fact that Hillary Clinton would win all of it.